40 Heart and Broken Heart Spinner Acrylic Nail or Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to be showing you a 40 heart spinner nail. So it's a pretty simple thing to do. You just take a bar bead, so it's like a glass bead that you make for jewelry making, or that you'd use for jewelry making that's a little bit longer, so it's kind of a tube shape. And then you just sculpt your little heart around it, and that easily goes onto a head pin, also used for jewelry making, and then you can easily stick that in a nail. So I'm going to be showing you how I did all of that, but then I also am going to be doing a little review of a couple new colors from Madame Glam that I absolutely love, especially that really pearly pink one. It is just gorgeous. So I'll be showing you those as well. This little heart spinner has a whole heart on one side, and then if you flip it over, it's got a little crack down it, so it's got a broken heart on the other side. So I thought it was kind of cute to have a whole heart on one side and broken heart. You can flip it back and forth, you know, whatever your situation is. So I hope you guys like it, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So to begin with, you're going to grab a little bar-shaped bead, like I mentioned, and you're just going to kind of slide that onto your wire, basically to make sure that it fits on your wire. I know that I've had some beads where I have done something with them, and then I've realized after the piece that I've made over the bead to slide onto the piece of wire doesn't have a large enough hole on it. So I mean, you know there's different sized beads, and I have discovered that I can't use it, and I have to start over with a larger bead. And that's no fun. So every once in a while, I like to just make sure that the bead I'm using is going to work, which is what I was just kind of doing there. Plus, you can use your wire to make sure that your acrylic doesn't fill in your holes. So the holes on the end of the bead. So now, with red acrylic, just place a bead over the top of the clasp bead and shape it into a heart. So you kind of want to make sure that the heart is the exact same length as your little bead is. And you don't want it to be any bigger though. So you want it, so it's kind of a process. So the little, the top loops of the heart can go up beyond up beyond that little glass bead. However, you don't want the point to go any farther down below. So just kind of, you know, work on it. After you have it on there a little bit and you kind of got the shape down, the outside shape, go ahead and I know that mine, it was, it had this nice little lump in the middle where the bead was. So the edges, especially those top little loops, were a lot thinner than the rest of it. So I'm just gonna take some more red acrylic and just kind of fill that area in so that it had a nice smooth shape and it didn't look so, I don't know, like a little wave in the middle for the bead. After that has all set, you can take that off and then I'm just going to just put it on my little my little brush cap. And then I'm going to be adding another layer of acrylic to the back side. You want your little heart to have a really rounded shape and kind of like a really soft rounded shape on both sides. So the one side that was touching the nail form backing before is completely flat. So you need to just round that out a little bit. So now I'm going to be filing it very carefully, just a little bit on the edges, just to make sure that you know, because it's not perfectly smooth on the edges where everything was. So I'm going to be filing it slightly just to make sure that everything looks nice and smooth and there's no weirdness happening. It's kind of awkward to do and not file your fingers. That was always my concern. So then slide it back on your wire. Make sure it spins. Mine had a little bit of acrylic that was sort of stuck in it, so that's why I, you know, test it to make sure it spins before you're all done. So you can file that off and then you can test it again and see how it goes. And this little heart spinner, it spins, um, and it spins kind of the way I wanted it to. I want it to not like spin continually in a circle, but it does go around in a circle because I want it to kind of be able to stop on whichever side it was that you wanted, either the broken side or the whole side. So I liked that it, I don't know if that makes sense. I like that it kind of was a little bit stiffer than sometimes. And that's going to happen a lot with the bar beads because they have a lot more friction against the wire. So then I just glued the end of my wire. So I've got the little, ha the little heart on a head pin. So that's a pin that's got a base on it. And if you go into any jewelry making section in a craft store, you're going to easily be able to find head pins. They have them in different lengths and different sizes. Um, just kind of keep in mind what, what you're doing with it. Don't choose a huge one. I know the ones that I have are really, really long. That's because I also use them for jewelry making. So I have ones that are so long. That's not necessary if you're just using them for nails. And then in case the entire nail is a layer of clear acrylic, one thing you want to make sure is that when you are sizing up how long you want your wire to be, make sure that it doesn't go into the nail farther than what your nail bed is. So because this is going to have a French tip on it, you don't want this piece of wire sticking up into that French air, into the nail bed area. So then very carefully file your clear acrylic. Do not not nick your heart as best as you can. Just try to do it gently. And when you were, were encasing the nail, just try to make it as 
smooth and perfect as possible. So now with that Madam Glam color that's called Spiked Cotton Candy, I'm going to be painting that just not all the way down the nail because it it's not necessary. This is my nail bed color and it is a gorgeous nail bed color if you like a little bit of glitter and something a little bit funky in your nail bed because it's got these little different shaped and different colored little glitters in it and it's otherwise the pink color is perfect for a nail bed. It's got the perfect pink hue to it that's not overbearing. And then I'm going to be applying Shimmer White over just the smile line. I didn't take it all the way down to the tip of the nail, just the very, very top section there. And I'm going to be cleaning up the smile line with a brush dipped into some isopropyl alcohol. Just make sure that smile line looks nice and pristine. And then I'm going to be taking and applying Flawless, which is the color that I mentioned in the intro that I said I loved because it's gorgeous. And it really is. It's like the, it's just gorgeous. And I'm going to be blending in the shimmer white and the flawless together to create a very subtle gradient. These colors gradient really well together because they have the same type of shimmer in them. So they have the same the same feel. So like two cream colors are going to become a gradient really well and two shimmer colors, two glitter colors. So if you're doing a gradient, it works well to do two colors that kind of are in the same category. So I'm going to do a second coat over these, especially when it's when you're doing a gradient, you always need to do at least two coats. It doesn't even matter how opaque a color is because as you're blending them together, you're taking away pigment. So you got to make sure that you do add add two coats. If you want to, depending on how it turns out, you could even do a third coat. Um, especially if you're doing this over a natural nail, you're gradiating these two colors. You may want to do a third coat because the base coat is going to make the first coat a little bit less, uh, less pigmented. So now sparkling hearts is the color I'm going to be applying over the heart on the little heart spinner. So I did one side of the heart as best as I could without painting anything else. If you want to, you could have painted this before you attached it into the nail. After you have the front side cured, flip it over. You actually don't really know at this point which is the front and which is the back, and there isn't a front and a back. But what was the front side? Flip it around and then paint the other side of it with sparkling hearts so that you've got that gorgeous glittery polish on both sides. And it looks so good, I absolutely love it. It is so sparkly. It is like the perfect not red Valentine's Day color. It's not, it's more of like a plum or not plum, but like a berry color, which I think is, I don't know. I like that better than like a true red for Valentine's Day. I like something a little bit sweeter. So now I added that little with black paint. I painted my little crack down my heart on one side. And then with black paint, I'm just going to do a very simple, I'm just going to define the smile line very easily with the black paint. So I just added a couple swirls on each side and then a dot in the middle. I didn't want to do anything too crazy on the rest of the nail. I wanted to keep it very simple, mainly because this, this nail has the option of either being a broken heart design or a whole heart design. And so you don't want to do anything on the nail the rest of the nail that kind of either says love and kisses or love is death to me. So you want to keep it very uh, sort of neutral on top. And then I'm going to take a little bit of white paint and just highlight the crack in the heart. So I did a black line and then a white line right next to it, just because depending on the light, sometimes the black line is easier to see and sometimes the white line is easier to see. And either way, you want to make sure that that little break in there is visible. And then apply a layer of gel sealer over the nail and over one side of the heart. And at, every time you apply something over the heart, make sure that you're not touching the wire or anything so that you're not sealing that in place. And then do the other side of the heart after the first side is cured. And that is it. I hope you guys like this and I'll put links to the Madame Glam colors in the description box below. I'm in love with all of them. I'm never disappointed with Madame Glam. And so yeah, please share recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I would love to see them and I will see you in my next video. Bye.